most of the pieces I find in public art, you see something new and different every time. Catherine Cathers, Arts and Culture Specialist for the City of Coral Gables. Coral Gables was founded on the arts and many of the pieces of the infrastructure for the city were designed by artists. Miami-Dade County actually has one of the oldest art and public places programs in the country. And following in their footsteps, the city of Coral Gables was starting to do a lot more development and so they decided to adopt their own art and public places policy in 2007, which went into effect in 2010. One of the most popular art and public places pieces that we have is a sculptural piece called Old Shoes, and that is by the artist Hector Lombada. He's from Cartagena, Colombia, and the piece is developed from a poem. Many of our early works were donations, so not only the Sister City pieces, like the Old Shoes, but also pieces by a, a prominent artist, Jean Ward. All of the artworks that we have in our collection, you can view 24-7, wherever they are. So Alice Acock's piece was the first artwork that we were able to have access into Art Basel, Miami Beach. That led us to our next piece, which was by Carlos Cruz Diaz, another world-renowned artist, who did a design of the painted crosswalks that are in front of City Hall. Geraldo Plaza was one of those happy accidents, happy moments, where doing overhead artwork and installation was not part of the design of the, of the plaza. But as the trees were growing up and we had these open spaces, especially on either end of the plaza, we saw it as an opportunity to incorporate art and immersive experiences like the Umbrella Sky Project when we had the opportunity to work with Kiki Smith, her Blue Night piece, which is consisting of 42 drawings of constellations. Now, a particular piece can also be experienced through an augmented reality application where you see Kiki's drawing itself, and then the lines for the constellations show up at the same time. You could put it in the sky and, and try to line it up that way. The majority of the people that are, are viewing the works and experiencing it are the people that are passing by. So whether they're residents that live nearby and they see it every day, or they're visitors that are just passing through, it becomes part of the fabric of the community itself. And actually, the, the piece here, um, A Midsummer Night's Dream, you may not notice it when you're passing by, but then you, you glance over your shoulder or as you're approaching it, and it has that very much of an aha effect. For us, each and every one of our pieces is to be a place of encounter. Um, Rosario likes to call it an instant landmark at the same time. So our pieces kind of double as instant landmarks and places of encounter. And because of that, we like to call our artworks kind of social sculptures because they're meant to bring people together. The pieces are meant to be used by the people and the people are the owners of the piece. In this case, for us, it was important to bring a piece of home outdoors. We make the piece very familiar, if you wish. It's something that we, we have seen on the one hand, but at the same time, it's quite extraordinary. It's like a, like a, like a frozen memory in stone. And, and being coral so in stone, the sofa is actually made of coral gables. So for us, it's a, this is one of our a, a, most site-specific pieces, pieces ever that we have ever yeah. done. Together with the history of Coral Gables, where the fantastic has always been part of somehow everyday life, you know, the Venetian pool, the piece is pretty much part of that very tradition of the fantastic as part of everyday life. But then, as you know. a, with the idea of the fantastic becoming part of everyday life, the tree Oh yeah. The, the sofa and the tree are, are one. one. So Illuminate Coral Gables started years ago when the mayor first started talking about the idea of adding more light and light-based artwork to the city. And there's a wide variety of artworks in the exhibition, so everything from large-scale projection works to pieces that are more subtle. The city of Coral Gables is founded on the, on the arts and has been important to our past history and is equally important to our history moving forward. 
We're continuing to expand the collection and continuing to, to seek out artists and develop opportunities that we have as a city itself and with our private developers.